G'day everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Melbourne Punter Show. As usual, I'm joined by Darren Potter. Guppy. Racetrack Ralphie Thank Horrocks. Thank you very much. Ralphie. Good afternoon. Hey, We're back here at the All Nations for a couple of quiet ones as we look back over the uh, the previous week's action. Um, an interesting day there at Caulfield on Saturday and I've been to Packham and Mowie since. Just Packham and Mowie. How's, how's go? Do you think we've got enough racing on at the moment in Victoria? But who's decided... Who's to say? I had a recent later colonoscopy and I thought that's actually not a bad um, analogy for what's happening in Victoria racing. Can someone just stick a camera and a hose right up the backside of everything and free things up a bit? Eight meetings we've got coming up in the next four days. Well, there's, in still, May. there's still three or four nights they haven't tapped into yet. Yeah, Ralph and I get punished half the time by being sent to in the back in a more crammer to do these night meetings. <laughs> Is that when you've been naughty? And uh, <laughs> to say they're a product for. Uh, the pubs and clubs and TV. That's definitely reflected in the crowd sizes at some of these night meetings. And I, for one, and I'm sure you, you are too, boss, will be thankful come the end of the month when the season's finished. I think we'll be having a big Thursday night party when we get hit okay. June and we no longer have to deal with these. Before, because the, even if you don't preview them or do yeah. the form in the leader, you still got to review them. Yeah, and it's just it's torturous. torturous. And no, but it, you touched on something there about the. So, what we've got coming up in Victoria, we've got two on Thursday, day, night, yep. two on Friday, day, day night, night. Uh, two on Saturday, city meeting, and, and country, country meeting, and yep. two country meetings on the Sunday. In the middle of May, up against the footy season, yep. eight meetings in four days when the general public couldn't give a shit about racing. Now, if, and you say it's a public and clubs product, I actually reckon that would be fine if people were genuinely interested. They're not. It's, no. it's jammed in between dogs, trots, and cartoons, and for the desperate. Well, and can I say, it raises another issue that I find very frustrating, and that there is just too much racing for it to be properly policed. Yeah. For the stewards to do their job properly. So there are so many things happening at these second grade meetings. Look, packing on Sunday, there were a couple of massive form reversals there, and like if the stewards started looking into everything that needed to be looked into from that meeting on Sunday, they wouldn't be able to attend. Where was it? Mowie yesterday. Mowie yesterday. Mowie yesterday down there. Geelong today. You know what I mean? So, so what happens is those things just pass through to the keeper. Now what concerns me is there are people, there might be some, whatever recreational punters there are left around, sitting in a pub, yes. having a tab or whatever, having a bet on those meetings. Okay, they back a horse, it might, you know, runs, it gets beaten, whether it runs second or whatever. Straight after the race, they go over to the form guide and they look at what the what form the winner had. Yes. And when those winners have got no form at all, and there's a glut of them winning, that's really bad for the industry. And the stewards need to delve into those to make sure that the people involved, that if, if, they, if they do it too often, they're not going to get away with it. But the problem is, they, not, they, they are going to get away with it. So they can do whatever they want. They can, they can give them a run, they can do things that they do with them at training. There's all sorts of little tricks that can be done. Yeah. I mean, there's no signal in the form yes. that this horse is about to improve. And that, if that happens what, here and there, one off isolated, not a big deal. Okay, you just cock it sweet and move on. Yeah. But if there's a glut of them, it's really bad for racing, I think. No, well, and no doubt at all, because it comes out of confidence. And I've actually thought deeply about this, because my general frustration with Terry Bailey and Terry Bailey's regime, and this isn't personal, Terry, unlike some who don't understand, <laughs> if, once you go personal, you are actually a bit vulnerable to legalities. <laughs> it's never personal, this is all about philosophy. But that the... The emphasis is on the drug testing, the yeah. feed bin, what trainers give them, and I actually reckon it adds up because what you can actually do, Potts, it's pretty logical. You can test 10,000 samples as easily as you can test 100, mm. but you can't investigate 10,000 rollouts as easily as you can investigate 100. You can't look at the form of 10,000 places as easily as you can. Because that's why we do what we do. It's bloody hard work, yeah. and it takes a lot of investigation uh, from an outsider's point of view, as we are. We're, we're just looking at the data and trying to find a winners from there. So things can get through to the keeper from an on-field perspective, or on track perspective yep. in this. We are competing with sports betting and the interest in sports betting and AFL aren't promoting betting, they're not, not against it, they're, they're neutral, let's say. But people want to bet on it because they know the players, they know the form, they know the teams they, know they, they talk strong, about. Yeah. You know, and that's that's away from the professional part, I'm just talking about recreational. Yeah. So who are we who are we appealing to? having eight meetings in the middle of May, after Warnable where once a year crowds go on bed yep. and enjoy themselves, what is going on? Well, they're appealing to me, Ralph, because I'm going to Ballarat tomorrow, so <laughs> there's one. So um, I'll, give, I'll give a really good example, okay? We back Rich Charm on Sunday, yep. okay? 
got a great run, good ride from Chris Simons. So, you know, we can't ask for any more than that. The horse ran right to its form. Yep. It gets beaten by I'm a Blaze, okay? Who had old form that was good enough to win that race, but had done nothing in about seven or eight runs. Yep. It had been getting beaten anywhere between five and ten lengths in every one of its runs. Okay? It inexplicably, I suppose, pre-race, post-race we get the answer, finds its form and knocks us off. Okay, you can cop that if it's, uh, if it's the only one, but it wasn't, it wasn't the only one. When it comes back to scale, first of all, we have the trainer, like, spruiking from the rooftops, so and Wendy then Kelly? the jockey, Wendy Kelly, and then the jockey, Craig Newitt, saying there's only one reason this is a lazy horse, and it desperately needed a jockey with spurs. Yes. So a big shout out to our good friend, Kevin Skeen, We've got some correspondence, we'll, we'll, we'll talk, come we'll to that, that in a moment. moment. But, um, I mean, that was a gear change. On that horse, Craig Newell on, for I think it was Patrick Maloney, I think, um, spurs on with, with a complete difference with that horse. It woke it up, and that information being withheld from punters is so wrong. Like Either, either it becomes a gear change, or you ban them. I don't really care which one it is, but it's, it's got to be one or the other. You can't have a horse running around for five or six runs with not with that with that piece of equipment missing, and then allow it, uh, uh, it to go unexplained. And then after the race, the, the, the only explanation for that horse's form reversal is the spurs. And but, a, um, but I think also not just that. What was what what's the siren? Because yeah. isn't that what we're talking about at the moment? Just breeding. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to talk about that on camera? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> what about the punters? No one cares about the punters. Everyone cares about the brooders. Um, no. But just, I think to make it easier, Fox, like I know I, I go often enough to see that Froggy pretty much rides with Spurs all the time. Rather than absolutely complicating it and saying for each individual race, would it even be enough to say, right, these two, three, four jockeys, if you're going to wear spurs at all today, you have to wear them for the entire day. Yeah. And just say, right, so all that comes up, late riders and old rations, on that page on Racing Australia, the following jockeys will be wearing spurs for the entire meeting. Because otherwise, you're just going to have 50 million gear changes. But if you see it in the, in the, if you see it in the form guide that this is spurs on, it's... Oh, it's, as, as Mark says, it's, it's a sign like, of intent. It's like when blinkers are back, yeah. it's intent. You look back to when this last happened and is there a signal there? You know, oh, like, a, and the, the, the stable didn't bet. The horse went around at thirty-one dollars on its best form. It was a four-to-one chance in the race, so that's very frustrating. On, uh, I, I haven't been hands-on with the horse mid, mid uh, teens. I was a shepherd for a couple of years. It's about six I years ago. Dog. I hope they're okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I hope they're okay. But ultimately, we have to treat this as a business. We actually yeah. don't don't care, but we say that within the bounds of obviously we hope we're all treated well. How the fuck is that not an animal welfare issue when they talk about the amount of whips that you could restrict to when the horse's rump is this big and I, I dare say the horse feels it. I don't, I'm not in the, the camp to say it doesn't feel it because otherwise they wouldn't use it. What digging digging a metal yeah, piece into to be the fair side though, of their guts. To be fair though, Ralph, not, it's not like the old cowboys. It's not like the old western movies where they've got the big roll ones. Literally it would be half the size of your thumb yes. on the back of the boot. But they're using it for a reason. Yeah, it's obviously an encouragement tool. And in some cases, I would say, like the whip, a bit of a control tool as well. But like very few of them, obviously for weight reasons or whatever, actually wear them. Or, and it might also be because they don't actually know how to use them properly, whereas someone like Froggy who wears them all the time, and Nash used to wear them when he was riding in Sydney. Um, if you have that information, it's a huge... Legger. And it is little things like that. The same with putting bar plates on horses when they probably don't. If well, I saw if I saw long long rockstar in a race next week or the week after yeah. with spurs on, I'd oh, be a little bit interested. Yeah. Anyway, talk about it later. No, no. But uh, you actually touched on something uh, last week about the or maybe it was before, but about, about the amount of questions or information yeah. that supposedly doesn't get the stewards. Yeah. <laughs> Racing people need to understand it's very very simple. Hunters who are serious about the sport. Now, that's not all of us, particularly the ones that you're trying to cater for at the moment. But punters who want to take this seriously and look at form and look at data and times and all these other things, we want fucking everything. Yeah. We want every single yeah. bit of information. We want to know what questions are asked, what 
Spur, who's wearing spurs, what gear changes are, and then we can decide for ourselves what information we want to use. And that, the, that's got to be a starting point, doesn't the it? Absolutely. With, the thing with that information is, though, that's catering to the people who are the high volume, high turnover, believe that's how the industry is funded, punters. So if you give them, it gives them more confidence, they'll wager more. Um, back to the workload thing, which we were talking about with the eight meetings in four days and, and whatnot, we've actually had some correspondence, gentlemen. Um, there's a number of ways you can get in touch with us at RT Ralphie on Twitter, on at, at the picnics on Twitter. You can email in the show. You can even send a snail mail if you wish, or you can even you can send it even you can come and talk to one of us if you bump into. <laughs> I know you've bumped into a couple of people in the street lately. I course. have. I've got to say, I've been meaning to do this for, for God knows how long. I ran into a gentleman on uh, St Kilda Road. Yeah. And you know, he introduced himself. I was actually walking out with some takeaways, and we didn't have a chance <laughs> to chat for too long. His name was Bob, and anyway, um, I spoke to DK about it later. Turns out the man's called Bob Dusting, and he's a legend. And yep. I really apologise, Bob, that I didn't know some of your backstory when I met you. And I'd love to run into you again, and maybe we'll get you on the show one day, because some of the, um, the, the, the older stories that you could no doubt tell us would be <laughs> highly entertaining. And I would um, love to hear what someone with your background, you spent a lot of time working with the Semperi boys and all that yep. sort of stuff. I'd love to know what you think about where racing is at the moment. So. Uh, that's a big load of Bob, and also uh, I was at Port Melbourne the other week having a steak and um, ran into a uh, chap called Michael in the bar there. I think he does the, um, the software for the footy tipping competition in the pubs called Star Picks, I think it was. So, big load of Michael at Star Picks and his mates in New Zealand. Yeah, so you can either run into us in the street or I'm on track most of the time, so if you're out at the races, come up and say hello. Um, and a, a funny story that came out of yesterday, there was a legendary bookmaker here in uh, Victoria who's now passed away, Victor Ma. He yeah, I played basketball against him once. <laughs> he had all these, all these uh, friends yeah. who we were in Z grade, I think, yeah. know, and, and just hanging in there. They shouldn't have been in Z grade. It was the equivalent of just walking out of the team you play against, like, <laughs> they throwing them up to the hull and playing two style. <laughs> Fuck, yeah, sorry. Well, Victor was a legend. Uh, he would stand on the stand, he was uh, chain smoke. To I was say, yeah, it wasn't the dark. Towards the end of his career, he was known to fall asleep on the stand. Right. But um, a very good mate of mine and a friend of the show, Mickey Harrick, he clerked for him one day at Caulfield. And he was given the bag and said, right, Mickey, you're on the bag. And Mick goes, right, punters, we're betting you're on the first. And uh, he just got a tap on the shoulder and Victor turned around in his thick Asian accent and says, shh, bored do talking. <laughs> he was also all the, the only thing Victor ever called out was no credit, no flactions. <laughs> so we were we were reminiscing about Victor yesterday and some of the other old bookies that are missing from the track. But that gets us back to our correspondent. So Kevin Kevin Skeen, who's a very good man, he's at Track Data on Twitter. Definitely worth a follow. Yes. Uh, hi Darren, I know your weekly workload has increased immensely over the last six months with the new DK and Pods service as well as the increased Victorian racing calendar with the weekly Thursday and Friday night racing. But I really miss not getting your early Saturday set on a Friday. Even if it's only possible some weeks, I think it would be, a really, it would be really appreciated by subscribers to get some sort of shell report that highlights your positive and negative horses so that we can reassess any differences that we, need, that we have in that area. No need to include your early odds assessment or likely bets at this time if time doesn't permit. For punters betting on more than one state, there is a lot, lot of time left to reassess individual runners on a Saturday morning. So I'm sure that any sort of early information will be welcomed by subscribers. By our, but I understand if it can't be done. Keep up the great work, Kevin. Yeah, no, thanks, Kevin. You, it can be done for sure. The, the problem's been the Thursday night meetings. Because I, I get up early on Thursday mornings and I do the Saturday meeting. I can do all the grunt work for it to sort of get a really good base of where I'm at. So usually by... Thursday afternoon, early Thursday afternoon, I've got a set of prices, and you know I've gone and backed some horses early myself. Yeah. Um, but then putting that all together to get it onto the set is what then takes a fair bit of time. So do the maps and um, all the comments. But there's absolutely no problem at all with me sending out a set of prices with any early bets on Thursdays. Particularly once we get past no more Thursday night yeah, meetings and, fr and Friday night The night meetings. season finishes mercifully at the end of this month. So I, I, we'll definitely get back to setting out interim sets Thursday night, Friday lunchtime at the latest. Um, they probably won't have comments on them, but 
it'll have that stuff that you want, which is really the price, early prices selections, and the, the early prices that I'm um, recommending that you, you, you take for some, or you know, you make your own decisions. So. It's, it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because yeah, I wrestled with the same thing that uh, my when I first started doing it, uh, probably the first two years it was available Friday morning, and then there was one. It might have been a waterfall type week. Yeah. Where you just, yeah. And I know. I thought, well, how many of your early prices do you really miss if you're selling them as opposed to the money for yourself, which is going. But um, where you go, how many of your subscribers or customers can actually get on in time to win anything before it's all taken anyway, whereas Sunday morning it's more of a mature market. Yeah. It's not a complete market. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fine line to, to trend, isn't it? It is. There's usually only about half a dozen. Yeah. Really, there's about half a dozen that I think of. And by Thursday night or even Friday morning, there's enough up that if you've got enough accounts, you can you can get on them. You know yeah. what I mean? For it, you could probably back a horse to win five thousand without too much trouble if you've got enough accounts. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the best. Um, so, so like it is, you know, like I think there is a value in having something go out Thursday evening or Friday morning because the big that by Saturday morning. The market's got to a point where it really reflects the form. Yes. And then what happens after that is then other bits on top of that. Stable yeah. information, the way horses parade, you know. The syndicates charming. Yeah, the syndic you know, if they really like one, you know. Do you know how I actually resigned from Fridays on RSF because of that? And once I've decided I was going to wait till Saturday morning. So it was Miss Gunpowder. And we all get them right now, this is happening to be more So I've, I've said, well, this is going to win, and it's going to start a favourite. It was five dollars fifty. So by Saturday morning, it's four twenty. You know, I'm putting stuff out. Yeah. And I thought, why am I doing that for two hundred and fifty bucks? <laughs> when for my own people, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's that hard thing to line up because, you know, ultimately, the real big players don't open their shoulders until no. Saturday. Yeah, well, it's not the the, the, the starters gun for them. Yeah. is nine o'clock Saturday morning, right? Yes. And it's, then it's only like. It's like the start of a 5,000 metre race. They jog off the line. Yeah. Well, if they really like one, then they've got marks significantly shorter than the market. They'll hit a lot of them across the board at the same time. Yeah. And it'll it'll shorten at least a point, maybe more. Um, but other than that, they sort of just they pinch a little bit here and there, and they wait as long as they can if they think it's not. Yeah. But sometimes one of them will go, and then the other one chimes that they, they're fighting. Yeah. Each well, other the, the same price, then that's so. what happens. Then almost that's when it is snowing. If if the syndicates have landed on one runner, and they might be back in three or four runners in the field, but if they know that there's one runner that they're all going to be on, that's when you see the waves where it's eight, six fifty, five, four twenty. Then you know that it's probably been two or three waves to. to and people off. like Kevin, uh, I'd, yeah, I'd actually got similar correspondence with him, Shelby, but um, he uh, he would. And there's a lot of people like Kevin who would just want to read as much information as they yeah. can from sources they trust, like yourself, yeah. and say right. Now I've got my, my headspace to have a pump, and 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 then really let go on a Saturday, and that's why they probably want the early information. So it's probably a combination of both having a pump off your information, and then but also waiting when they can really open the shoulders. Yeah, speaking of reliable information, yes, right? Queensland RSPs, the race speed profile. Yes. you've been helping Vince do them. They've, they've yes. been good the last couple of weeks, and we're right into the teeth of the. This it seems to get longer every year. This carnival up there. It seems to you now just run into Turnbull Stakes Day, it seems. Well, I, I made a decision both in writing this for Vince and uh, my own stuff and all that. I, I would not chip away on things that we're selling it. We want yep. other people, like it's worth the, this is the business. And Friday, when he said, Rudy, because he, he, we write them all and he said, what's the, what's the odds? <laughs> He's declared Rudy, it's $10. I'm looking at going, oh, well, <laughs> and, and a couple of those. So you can get a buy at the Punter Show uh, yep. and also sure if you get in touch with the Punisher, they'll send you either the last two weeks or being over two weeks, including the Gold Coast meeting. Yep. And where Vince is at his best, and I know I'm sleeping one day in his fan club, but where Vince is at his best is merging four minds, because he's put the clock on every single horse in Australia and New Zealand when it comes to the... And Chile. Form. And Chile. And Ch every, like, any everywhere. So, ultimately, he knows how fast each horse can yep. run. That's a pretty it's, good advantage. It's a very good starting point. Isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's a very good starting point. Speaking of uh, Queensland, being able, being able to merge for, for from different states and different jurisdictions is a real challenge. Yeah. And Vince yes. is as good as anyone I've ever come across. He, the, like he has a great handle on the Adelaide form that comes to Victoria. So every time there's a you know a um, 
a competitive horse coming from Adelaide, the first yeah. thing I do is get in contact with Vince, and it's the same with the Hobart form. It's like so a few Tassie horses come over here, and I think Vince might have given Admiral a bit of a chance there. The other one. I can't oh, remember, yeah, but yeah. Um, you know, he always has a much better handle on those and that away stuff than I can get myself any other way. So, and just one more thing with the Queensland Carnival, the RSPs will and definitely grab Johnny McLeod set too. They've been going along there, just the quiet achievers, the John McLeod set. But uh, that leads us into the $250,000 top better tournament that um, is different format this year, where it runs over four week spots. Oh. So it's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm. You're talking to the clubhouse leader here on day one of the Sydney one. <laughs> yeah. So, so four. We, we do have that coming up. So uh, <laughs> so would that be, would you get that same situation where you get the the automatic rebuy at the I, end? I would assume so without having bless you pots. Um, I would assume so without having look, look, looking through it. But uh, Can I give yeah. people a heads up tip on this four works if you, if you do the, the top better? If you like one, fucking go for it. Yes. You're going to get weeks or, or races or group of races that you've got no idea. Yep. So what actually killed me wasn't having a shit day on the second day. I should have been that far in front of wasn't funny because I, here's our Rocky and uh, yep. a little love, a lot of love, rather, yep. who was like us on Saturday, and uh, Chautauqua. That's pretty hard to get three of those prices any week. Now, they all happen to be on the same day. I should have been sitting there yeah, with a been. monster clubhouse yeah. and then sitting back and making everyone panic. Instead, I'm just ahead and I wasn't good enough. And I, my second day, the horse is the one I didn't like. So. But that's the beauty of the tournaments. There's so many different ways oh. to tackle it. There's different ways to get in there. It's the 1100 buy-in, or you can win the satellites to get in there. There's a, everyone's got a different strategy of how to tackle it. It's a very interesting way to bet too, and it keeps you entertained potentially for four weeks. So, so, so jump on board. Like, jump on board. It looks like we'll do Corford part two. Yes, we will. Can I do, this is the the Sunday Herald Sun from from last With week. With the flying doormat, the great first stool on the card. Well, I, I, this is good because it's actually a good man who I've never met him, but I've got no, nothing against Nathan Exelby whatsoever, and it knows his stuff and all that. But I just want to give you an example of the traditional racing media yeah. compared to the, what we're doing. Now, if you like what we're doing or what the Sydney boys do, uh, tell other people that you like. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you a thing. No. So, so get the YouTube clip of what we do and send it out via your social media platforms. Uh, I've got a website. You can subscribe to me for free. Or I, or I send out newsletters, pots. Uh, people either buy their stuff or they watch what we do and they learn the stuff from it. It's a free area, free, yeah. free life. But if you prefer what we do, which is actually talk to pundits rather than the way racing media's coverage, do that. Like us. We give away a lot of stuff for free. There's a lot of free tips on the side. And in part two here, what about the punters? I'll, I'll have three well, we horses for you here to follow. So. Well, we might even do the what about the punters and we'll just do the Caulfield review in part two. So I think by yeah. what, what you're about to say, Ralph, falls into what about the punters. Well, I, and I'm, I'm a prime example because I don't bet in Sydney, but I've got onto this one myself and the things that Mark has yeah. taught me particularly, but Glenn and Dallas, and the enjoyment I get out of watching him anyway. So when the boys asked me to be part of the poker tournament or the times when I was on like, oh, said I'd always mention the punters show and things I yeah. would learn because it was about what we do, not about the way the sports cover. Now, this is the headline, Tearful Victory for Old Mate. And this is after Malaguera won. Now, after Malaguera won, what, or that, any place, but what we do is, now how did the horse manage to win over 1,200? You're fast, 1,400 yep. horse. Uh, what about the money for Dothraki that was there? They come out of the trees to back it, obviously. He was ready, ready to come to play. Some of Wallace didn't turn up. And the one of the biggest conundrums I think we ever have as a punter, He's not quite a 1,200 metre horse, Malaguera, but he's got intestinal fortitude and fights like a yep. bulldog. But the story was about, and it's, it's a sad story, but Glenn Collis's personal trainer died months earlier and he was sad for him. Now, what is that of interest to any of it us? It doesn't really. But, it's, but what I'm saying is the typical way racing is covered is to look for the emotional backstory like now, Melbourne Cup, yes, and that's why Michelle Payne's going to yeah. be in a movie and there's, got, there's, and a, books book, and, there's yeah. a book about it. It's once a year, yeah. But week after week, we're interested in how did a race unfold, surely. Like, but, but, I'll tell you what I'm interested, interested in, right? As soon as you mentioned Melbourne, we're I'm thinking there's a horse that you know won a race in enormous fashion over the spring carnival of 1400. Comes that, that was a very good form, yep. race, okay? So we come back from that. And he won again up on the back up, and he come back from that one of the thousand metres. Yes. So that's a signal this horse is in for a good campaign. Yep. Okay, he goes to Rose Hill, gets the sweet run and wins. Yep. Then he goes to Ramwick, is absolutely poison in the betting, 
is ridden poorly, but the horse did not go a yard. It was disgraceful. So when it wins, there should be a fucking explanation about how that form was reversed. There should be the some should be decent... I, mean, I didn't watch the race on today. I have no idea what happened. I don't even know what distance that race was over. So I'll assume that it must be 1,200 ridden positively. And now, Black Shin got off the scales after that Sydney ride. And he said, not one of my best. I handed it up and I don't know why. Now, so... so but I watched that race. I reckon he handed it up because the horse... He did... He hadn't... The horse was giving him no feel. Like, he gave it a bit of a squeeze and the horse didn't pick up. It looked very listless. So, it was a very out-of-character run. So here's exactly my point on all this, including what the stewards don't ask enough. We should have been able to read a thorough explanation from Lee Friedman, from Blake Shin, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, a sectional time breakdown. As a matter of course, yeah. for the industry customers, which are pundits. Yeah. Now, we can do it because we've got access to it. Uh, Vince Accardi stuff, it's all right, well, uh, which, to be fair, most of the media would have. Well, if they weren't going lazy and actually yeah. stopped worrying about back, back stories. So, that, I reckon, a dumb ride like that should actually get time. Now, I think, I, I actually wrote this on, on the Queensland RSPs for this. I think he went, I think it was 13, maybe 18 lengths slower than he did on Melbourne Cup Day when he won. To the 800 metre mark. So, expanded over a race, that's 50 lengths. That's how much slower he went by handing up. <laughs> now, okay, it was a mistake. We're not excusing anything, but we're saying it was like. So, there it is. And Johnny Allen's a nice guy from Ireland, and he's riding with us for Darren Weir. And, uh, you know, uh, Francesca Kamani's brother's now training, and uh, uh, Darren Weir's going to go north with Roy Impulse, who's a good horse. And there it is, four paragraphs, Sadler ride in question. Would there be any punter who treats it seriously, who looked at that, who didn't even back along Rock's Island? Who wouldn't think that that would be the most interesting talking point from the movie? You would have thought so. Why was why and, and on Monday, that's four four paragraphs and, and let's say they're on deadline, so it's 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 a loud late, it's a mention late, it's an investigation. Why by Monday when let's give it the footy comparison if they want to compare the way they cover racing to, to other sports? Yeah. On what would they be doing in footy? They would analyse every yeah, fucking bit of that race, mm. how slow we went, why he did that, what you know. They Not a word. Up. What? Because Johnny Sadler's a good bloke, or what, what is it? What are they frightened? Well, that is the most interesting. Top, top it just seems to me that if someone comes in and says, "Yeah, I made a blue," then this is play on. Well, I'd prefer. That. The, the, the other interesting part is though, um, the stewards have obviously given him a fairly good going over and asked Tommy, all, yeah, all, yeah, all yeah. the right questions. But I'll be interested to see where it ends up. Okay. Exactly. First of all, Tommy, if you give away. For no reason, three lengths additional start at the, at, at the, in the first section of a race. You've got to use energy to make that three lengths up. There's no benefit in giving it up. Yep. And there is a loss. There's a there's a there's a negative, yeah, there's a negative in having yeah. to re, re, uh, regather that three yeah. lengths. Like Vince, Vince's language, you're outside the elastic band. You're no chance. So the horse was no choice chance after 200 metres. But even so, that's part one. Then you get the second stage of the race when he actually got close to the back of. Tato Tondo, yeah. who finished in the money, I think, or might have finished fourth or something, just outside. Yeah. So, he's still in a position to, you know, possibly finish just behind the place getters. Yep. Yeah. And then, inexplicably, that's the point when there was some chance the horse could have made some ground. Yeah. He just puts a left hand blinker on and goes back in behind the whole yeah. field. It's just bizarre. So, so I know I'm not completely fine with the NRL side of things. I've used the AFL suspension analogy, right? So when these suspensions come out, they'll say, well, we're giving you two weeks for that. Yeah. And if you want to appeal, we'll go to the tribunal. Yeah. But we'll give you two weeks because that was shit. Yeah. Now that's a violence incident. And I understand that. This is totally separate to all the checks in running and stuff. That yeah, ultimately, it's sort of... Again, as punters, we hope everyone goes safe, but we don't give a fuck. Did we win money? Did we not win money? Yeah, it's all we worry about. Sort of what else. So when we see a ride like that, we say, now investigate every part of the betting and anything nefarious in it. Yeah. But the starting point is, that's not good enough for people no. to go to bet. Have two weeks off, now, we're, and we're still going to open the inquiry. Don't you reckon that's the best? Why, why should he be allowed to write? They're going to bring in character witnesses. He's a nice man. He's doing it tough. He had to, yeah. you know, oh, who gives a fuck? He made a horrible error uh, yeah, as a he, starting point. So have two weeks off, and then then we're going to check if there was anything. Well, I'd say to him, I think you can have two weeks off, or, just re, or you can, out of your own pocket, refund the punters that back that horse. Because you gave them no chance of collecting. Well, zero. Yeah, and a week earlier, yeah, so, okay, so we, let's use the data to back up what we're saying so that we can actually give some factual information and uh, insight to punters that the racing media fail, fail to do. 
So he was 8.3 lengths below Ben's mark. Yeah. Now that's Vince's figures. That track, that distance, it's dead tracks or better. Yeah. First four across the line. I think it goes back 27 years. Yeah. So it's probably a reasonable. It's a good sample size. size. Yeah. Right. So good sample size. So at Sandown, so the 800 he was 1.3 lengths below. Ben's that's mark. at a thousand. At a thousand meters. So at a faster race. He was actually seven lengths quicker the, in the, off the barracks. I went through his profile, knowing we were doing this. He's roughly a minus two to minus three horse. Now, let's say because of the headwind, which did affect the times yep. of the day, take off another couple of lengths and we, we you know, because the, the lead pack's not going as fast. At, at worst, you're going to say he's a minus five. That's my point. Yep. So he's gone minus 8.3. Now, the inquiry is because it looked visually shithouse. Yep when he ducked back in as you said pods. But this is where the stewards don't do enough. Because I'll say, the week before, the tip on data this is, the ride on Klishnia, Klishina, Klishina, yeah. was equally a shit. Yeah. They've gone out of the barriers, dead cold, get it behind Bo Rada. Now Bo Rada was having his 13th start for the prep and was a big finisher. You reckon you're going to out-sprint Bo Rada in, 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 when you're first up? No, well, that's not Not on yeah. fucking month of Sundays. So, it, it, it was it was in, in next in track gallop uh, phrase. It was five home two. Now yeah. that's dumb fucking tactics. I don't suggest anything yeah. underwood was done. No, it. it's just but not good. Here's what, why wasn't that question? Because <laughs> the horse had no mathematical chance. Yeah, it was poor tactics. There's no reason to give that three lengths away at the start. It was three lengths behind the second yes. last horse. It's just horses are about momentum. Yeah, they don't use much more energy running at. You know, their optimum speed, the speed that yep. gets their momentum going. They actually, they, they, it's quite often the case that when they're restrained and they're forced to run slower, yep. that they use more energy than they would running at about benchmark, which is, you know, that's about where most horses yep. want to go. You know what I mean? Some horses have got a naturally higher cruising speed and, and some haven't, but they, 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 they run at a pretty constant pace. And asking them to go slow then fast doesn't help about 90% of horses. It's about 10% of horses that have that gear change. 90% yep. just want to go and get into a yep. rhythm. And and the ground you see them making late in races is not them accelerating, it's the horses they're running past slowing down. Anyway. So before we look in, in deeper, because I suppose we'll do that part two, because yep. it, but another what about the punters moment. Okay. The generals, I've got a couple of crackers. Yeah. When do weights come out? On uh, Wednesday. Monday. 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 Yeah. And Monday then weights, except it's Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Yep. And Ryan is meant to be declared at noon. Oh, yes. Right. Ryan is meant to be declared at noon. Now, the, oh, I only got one horse totally fucking wrong on Sunday. Yep. I, I lost money. I, I got races wrong and I had unlucky runners, but I'm not talking about a horse I got totally wrong, which was rock and gold. Yeah. I liked it. Me too. The market didn't, I did, well, there you go, the market didn't, it didn't turn up, I don't know how fucking want. But I did keep looking, Saturday morning, Spread Eagle and Rock and Gold, Dwight Dunn's on both. Mm. And I'm thinking, now, the weights come out Monday, the yeah, acceptance is at 10 o'clock and you have to have riders declared by noon. I think the fine was $100 for not declaring. Yeah, which is bullshit. Betting starts on Wednesday. Yeah. Tell me this. Now, I know we're a bit sceptical in different areas the way we look at racing. What would be mildly more important? I would rather they put the jockeys down and told us on Saturday morning what weight they're carrying because I couldn't give yeah. a fuck. <laughs> would Dwayne Dunn compared to... Well, I don't know. Well, well, what they person, should do is, it's it's rather, rather than it being $100, $100 just go, right, it's... 50% of your riding for them. You're riding it for no, half what you're talking about. Half the time it's the trainer saying, oh, well, I might scratch, I might not, oh, he's going to run, okay, well, now you... So, well, it, it's, it actually has to go to... But all these joggies do have managers, Ralph. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, I'm not sticking up for anyone here other than the, the punters. But the, there is no possible way in a so-called professional sport that a rider announcement can be left until 8.30 on Saturday morning. Well, Fuck off. Well, what, what, what punters want, okay, I don't care what... Breeders want what trainers want, or what the fucking jockey managers want, or the jockeys. Who was okay? What the what the punters want is as close to complete information as possible, as soon as possible. Yep. So when there's emergencies in a race, or there's a horse that's duly accepted for different states, punters want to know about that as soon as possible. And yep. we certainly just you know it feeds into one other one of our favourite issues, which is scratching after scratching time. That's exactly you know like when you think you've actually got the complete information, yep. you might not. Yep. The horse might not run. No, anyway. All right, well, I'm going to tee off. And my two, what about the punters, come from across the board of this uh, this week. Um, we've got Aaron Barbie on 
on board now. He's doing a great job over there with the Adelaide sets, so make sure you jump on and grab them. I was at Sandown last Wednesday, mm -hmm. and the Fletch Files had You're a bit the one. about the car. Yeah, I was out there <laughs> with all the analog TVs. Um, Balaclava race three. Yeah. 15 minutes before the race, they decided to amend the distance from 1,200 back to 1,050. Now, I'm tipping if that happened here, your head would fall off. Oh, like honestly, I can't even. I can't even talk. Like, I mean, I just, I just want to believe. I just want to believe that racing Victoria would never be that foolish. Well, hang on a minute. Like, I, mean, I understand you've got a problem with your trap. Fine. Do what you did immediately after race three, which was call them off anyway. Call them off before the race, but don't jam everyone on the way out by going. You know what? We'll drop this back 150 metres, and that'll avoid the wet spot. No, your track was fucked from start to finish. You shouldn't have even raced. But that is offensive to anyone who bet in that race. Now, you said you were at Royal Moe yesterday. Yes, I was. Where uh, the crowd was, what, 30? Yep. And, and everyone got in on a family ticket. It was great atmosphere. Everyone got in on a family ticket. Um, but, last race, I only saw that this morning. Maybe you've got to go to yep. sleep. Let me know that a horse with a tongue tie yeah. lost in the barriers. Listen, I'll just yeah. They said, no, we can't hold this race up. It's just going to have to go without it. And how long does it take to put a tongue tie back on? About two minutes, if that. But there was one good thing that came <laughs> out of I can't believe, what I can't believe about that Balaclava story, Jumpy, yeah, is that at the minute you, if you, well, if you want to amend the distance, whatever you want to do, like you're, you're running the meetings up to you, you have to refund all the previous it's bets. Money. It's all void. It's not, a, it's not the same race anymore. It's a complete, it's, 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 like, it's extraordinary that they didn't void the bets. I just like, if we go to extreme, what if they said, you know what, Melbourne Cup Day, we're just going to revise this. We might bring it back to 2,400. Like, the world well, why, not, why not worry about the second lap? Just have them go yeah, down just, straight yeah, out. Yeah. Let's go down to the yeah, first yeah, bit of the race. Yeah, now, we don't know if we're serious, but the, sec when the people running racing, it comes back to this, they have no respect for people who like information. They think it's just, well, the group you spent the wheel twice, then you spun it three times for all that ball. Yeah. It's actually a tongue tie, a distance amount. Uh, by the way, on that topic, if, if you go to YouTube, remember the game, show the games, John Clark and Ross, yes. Ross Stevens and Rodan. Yeah, and then if you yeah, Google yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on YouTube, hundred the games are hundred meters. They actually, were, they they worked out the pool was ninety six meters to encourage track. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's horse racing. Well, I can. I, if any track administrators happen to be watching, which yeah. probably unlikely, but a thousand and fifty meter race and a twelve hundred meter race, same horses, everything the same. My market would be worlds apart. Yeah, it would be. So, I can't tell you how different it would be. But like, there's just there was one good. There was bizarrely for some. Reason yesterday, I think I'm not sure whether it's the old Adelaide Cup date, but there was a meeting at Morphville Parks yesterday for some bizarre reason. Now there was a very short. It would have been. Yes, and I think been. I think that's why they're still running that Metro meeting because I think next year yes. the Cup's going back to May and that'll be Adelaide Cup date. Okay. Race three yesterday at uh, at Morphville. I'm not saying that there's anything underwater here, but it doesn't add up to me. There was a horse. Uh, a short price favourite that absolutely bowled in. It's SP to dollar thirty. It was a dollar twenty, dollar twenty, dollar thirty across the toads. Top flat, dollar ninety. Now, on the basis of this, I watched Dynamic for most of that race, and the best price I saw, which I took a little bit of, was a dollar forty-five. And I took a dollar five because I'm mentally ill. I then went through and checked on Dynamic what the best price was every corporate is. And the only price that I got saw that got close to it was Bet365 bet a dollar seventy-five the day before. Kudos to the four bookies, and, and they weren't even listed in the South Australian Jockeys uh, Bookmakers League website as fielding there yesterday. Thumbs up to the four bookies who jammed everyone else who was betting top five yesterday by whacking it in at a dollar ninety. If that was actually bet, it must have been on three boards for about thirty-five seconds. But well what done, boys. Dollar thirty. <laughs> And the best corporate price I could oh, find anywhere was $1.75. Please, please. But apparently, $1.90 was about 30 yeah, seconds yeah, on course. Yeah. And if you think there was only nine people at Moe yesterday, I'm tipping there was less than that at Morphville yesterday. Coffee or part two? 